Hi there, it's Tom from FDS and today we are looking at this which is the latest version of the Stampede rewire kit from Blastersmiths UK. Now um, as you can see it is a wiring kit and it also comes with this which is a 6 kilogram mainspring and this is an entirely new spring, this is not the orange modwork 6kg spring, this is a Blastersmiths UK spring so they're to be applauded for making that because that springs out of stock at many places and as you can see it comes with a few new components and then we have the relay here this is just a standard 12 volt relay and uh, it's uh, designed to be board mounted so do be aware the legs on this are a little bit fragile so just be careful with those and then you've got one of the usual TO220 style MOSFETs here and um, which is the same as the one in the old kit so your um, gate drain and source will be the same in that and I'll run through that when we come to connect up the FET and then there are also some new additions so the first new addition after the relay is the fuse holder and this is just an automotive grade um, a blade fuse holder and three 10 amp fuses so you've got a couple spares and this is designed to go into the battery compartment of the Stampede and then we also have uh, two sizes of heat shrink this time which is a good thing because I've noticed that they've now got the smaller size which is handy for joining these wires and the larger size which is useful sometimes for covering bigger things and you get plenty of it so some of that and then you can see we've got an XT60 connector, it's your main battery connector. They now have a JST connector which is the bridge connector which jumps across um, the handle there. If you remember in my other build I had to make my own connector so you've got a JST connector there which just comes in half and that's designed to allow you to use the standard switch. And uh, then we've got a selection of wire in different gauges and lengths. So now I have found that some of these short lengths were a bit short for me. I don't know whether I just install things differently to the way that the kit designers envisaged it. Um, so I would recommend having um, a little bit of spare wire on hand. You can reuse some from the Stampede loom in this kit. It's deliberately designed that way. And I'll go through that when we have the Stampede on the bench. Okay, here we can see the Stampede. And uh, as you can see, I've just moved a few of these bits out of the way. Those are just the stock lock switches. We're going to lose some of that in a minute, and I'll go through what you can um, keep and what you can throw away. Now, the whole reasoning behind uh, including this relay is that it acts as a second switch, um, effectively, for the high and low current circuit. So what it allows you to do is leave this, which is the cycle control switch. Now, remember in the old one, we had to take this lid off, and then we had to replace this micro switch with a high current micro switch, and we had to get this all set up right. So what's been discovered is that some people don't get this quite right and so that, that messes with the cycle control. Now you can see that this has a very definite movement and stop, this cycle control. So if we leave this stock, that means that we keep the cycle of the gearbox exactly correct and it can't go out, um, which means that you're much lower risk of runaway firing in some instances and certainly of damage to the box. Now one of the things that's also included is this fuse here and obviously the idea of the, eight, of the 10 amp fuse is that it goes right back here in the battery compartment but you want it sticking out a bit so you can reach it so I'll go over that in a minute and that's actually going to sit almost right next to your battery connector and the point of that means is that um, if you get an overload it was discovered that certain magazines uh, weren't interfacing very well with the um, forward cycle control over here in the magwell and one of the problems was that um, it wouldn't read necessarily them very well and it would result in a runaway which would burn out the motor um, in the old system so the way the reason that that 10 amp fuse is there is it now protects the motor so if anything goes wrong your precious stampede motor won't melt and catch fire which is always about a good thing I think um, and also obviously by retaining the cycle control switch you're much, much less likely to have a cycle control failure um, even if your magwell and, or your magazine is not 100% perfect and remember now we now have a lot of most Chinese magazines people use AK mags with these things they use all kinds of different ones because you've got the worker bananas and the AR15 style ones from blaster parts some of which don't have quite the same lip design so it's important that I think these changes um, have been implemented now placement of components you'll see later I like to put my relay down here in the grip. Now I'm not sure if that's where it was envisaged to go but I kind of went with an airsoft style grip location and I think last time I put it right up here so that it was out the way and if you bond it in once it's all wired you can cut this webbing out and then you can bond it into the grip with a bit of hot glue which is perfectly adequate for this sort of application it's an ideal use for it just retaining it stopping it from rattling around and then you put your MOSFET in there behind the um, and then the grip connector can go down in here in this dead space. There are other options. If you want, you can run the relay right up in here into this big piece of dead space up here if you want more wire. 
and it's another possible relay location. It does make it a little tight in there and it means closing it can be a little bit delicate but I think it's more than offset by having it all nice and neat. So we're going to start by going over, I'm not going to do the spring replacement and I'm not doing how to open up your stampede, um, same as in my last guide. If you don't know that, don't do this mod. It is a moderately advanced modification, it's not a beginner's mod. Um, it is a very simple loom, but it looks complicated. So I should warn you that that's the case, and I'm going to run through which wires to keep, and then I'll run through connecting it all up, and I shall go as fast and as quickly as possible. So there's the standard cycle control switch, and we can see the top pin is normally closed. The middle pin is um, the common, and the bottom pin is normally open. So those are the three pins on the ordinary switch, and those are now labelled on the wiring diagram that's on the BSUK site. I'll provide a link to that in the description box. So that's that one. Right, so there's the relay. You can see we've got the pins. So we've got the common, normally closed, and the normally open. These two are for the coil. They don't matter which way round they go, the coil connections. There's a little picture, and I've linked the picture in the description box for you. If you want to uh, download that, that's free for you to look at. And that just has those labelled for you. And then we go to the MOSFET. Now the MOSFET is numbered slightly differently. So this is the same for any TO220 type um, MOSFET, certainly this particular serial number. And uh, you've got uh, pin 1, which is the gate, pin 2, which is the drain, and pin 3, which is the source. And uh, those will come in handy later on. And uh, again, those should now be labelled on the wiring diagram to help you out. And we'll go through that when we do the MOSFET. Right, I've separated the loom back now, and uh, I'm ready to start wiring. So what you've actually got is, I've taken this piece of brown wire from the loom, because it happened to be nice and long. These normally are wrapped around those little coil things, the inductor coils that are there to protect from RF interference, which you don't need. So what I've done is, I've taken the brown wire, because um, it was long, and I've soldered that onto the common. And this one is the standard wire from the normally open, because you don't need the normally closed, so that's blank. Um, but you do need the common and normally open. Okay, so here you can see um, I've hollowed the grip area out now. So that gives you some more room to put your relay and your MOSFET and some of your plugs and stuff. And uh, that's just how I fit them. Okay, so we're ready to make our first connection. And uh, what we're doing is we're running from here, the normally open. And we're going to the relay coil. So you can go to either of these two pins, whichever one you like. It doesn't really matter which one you go for. So I'm just going to go for the bottom one. Again, you need a little bit of heat shrink. Like I always do, just put a bit of heat shrink over the connection. So you can see that that's going to sit down like that. Okay, so I've now got the first wire in the kit, and this is the longest red wire at 310 millimeters. It's on the circuit diagram, and that is going straight into the coil at this end. Again, nice clean connection to the pin. If the heat shrink supplied with the kit. And then this one then works all the way back up here, goes back out, and that is your main battery wire through the battery tray like that, and then that will hook up to the uh, 10 amp fuse. So 10 amp fuse goes in this line, doesn't matter how you lay it, um, I tend to use more of the silicon wire because it's bendier than the thick PVC wire on the fuse. I'm ready to make the next connection, I've got the 30 millimeter length of red wire, it's going to go in here on this, the long piece, and I've already threaded some heat shrink on there to cut the join. And then that splice is going to come out, and then it's going to go to the third contact on the relay, which is the normally open, which is on the bottom there. So I'm going to put that on now. So there's that one all spliced in. I haven't heat shrunk everything into place. So obviously that's all going to go up around here and then travel on out that way. Okay, so I've run the next piece of wire and that is this one, which is the 190 millimeter red piece of wire is our next connection. And I've run it up through here. I've taken a little bit out the wall here of the um, compartment that used to house the little circular magnet thing because I like to run my wire in there, it gives you a bit more space and it keeps it out of the way of this boss and also well away from the trigger so that you've got no wires to snag in this area. So I've got that one's going onto the bottom terminal of the motor. Remember, when you take the um, circuit board off the motor, don't snap it off. I don't care what Coop says in some of his other videos. 
I've never seen him do a stampede, but I'm sure he probably broke it or clippered it off. Just desolder it properly. If you try and clipper it off, you risk breaking the tags and that'll trash your motor. So bottom one red, all the way down here, and that's gonna go onto the common of the relay contacts. So that's going onto the top here. And again, that'll want a little bit of heat shrink. 